Today we are going really small. We are going down to the marmot sized bonsai. Marmot-sized bonsai are bonsai that are less than 10 cm in height or when we're dealing with a cascade style also in width. Not be, to be taken very rigorously because the sizes are just approximately sizes. If you have a competition, a bonsai show, they might be very exact in the measurements but what counts is the feeling of the tree. It is a Shohin classification and a sub-classification is marmot, but shohin that are from the rim of the pot up to the top of the tree, a maximum of 20 centimeters, some say it's 21, but the official, official rules from the Japanese Shohin Bonsai Association is 20 centimeters. But if you have a piece of dead wood going a little bit higher, that doesn't necessarily count in. So I just brought this uh, to the table, not to work on it. We will work on the marmot bonsai today, but as a comparison in the size, so you can see how small it is. You can compare it to my coffee mug as well. This is a Shimpaku juniper, and the Shimpaku juniper has its benefits uh, from the mountains of Japan in an area where these were collected years ago and cuttings were made and they were made in big numbers because of their qualities. The same goes for the Itoigawa juniper. This is an Itoigawa juniper and this is a Shimpaku juniper. The difference is very subtle. The Itoigawa juniper is a little more bright in color and a little less dense and a little less stiff in its growth. The Shimpaku juniper has a tendency to be shorter and more compact and a little stiffer in the growth. And therefore it is an amazing material for small bonsai like Shohin bonsai and Marmot bonsai. We are at the stage with this juniper where it needs to be restyled and that happens all the time. You cannot keep a tree in the exact same style and form all the time and uh, it will outgrow itself and it needs to do that at a time to stay healthy. If you keep a tree trimmed and neat so it looks good all the year round, that is not possible, then you will simply slowly uh, decreasing its health and maybe even kill it at the end of a time. And when we are dealing with such a small tree in this size, this has stayed in a pot size like this for 15 years. I bought this at the famous Saburo Kato Mansai Inn, a bonsai nursery in Japan in 2005 and it has been kept in a pot size like this for all that this time and uh, for several years and especially this actually amazing small pot also bought in Japan. If you take a close look at the foliage you will be able to see that I have some of the so-called juvenile foliage appearing and that is a sign of uh, extra growth and maybe a little bit stress. It doesn't have to be because the tree is not fed well, it is, but it has can have to do with cutting it back to regain its shape and then it begins to develop the juvenile foliage stage that is much more powerful than the short and compact foliage that we actually want to make foliage pads of that is the characteristic of this specimen. So when this happens you have to deal with it in two ways or you can deal with it in two ways. You can remove it, reduce it or let it stay and change into the soft scale juniper classic foliage that we like that we can form these nice foliage pads from. What I will do is because I have uh, a choice to make, I can cut some of this off and that is the choice I will do. Uh, because if I leave it, this tree is so small that if I leave it, there will be much too much foliage. 
left behind and it will be uh, a ma mass of uh, foliage for such a small tree. It has to be um, fitting with the size of the tree, it has to be natural looking and it has to be in, in the right proportions. So what I would like to do here is I would like to cut off some of this foliage. I will not take it all because I, when you are dealing with bonsai you are dealing with a living material and you will have a risk of something dying when you begin to work with it. And uh, with a specimen like this where I only have a few branches to work with in the end to make this uh, the proportions right. If I just keep the one branch that I actually have, the beautiful foliage at, that also needs to be trimmed. Uh, when I bend this, if I risk this branch to die and I have cut all of this juvenile foliage off, I have no tree anymore because with all conif coniferous bonsai, with a very few exceptions, if you do not leave any kind of green back, they will be dead. They will not produce new buds back here if I cut <coughs> sorry, below the green. It is the opposite with deciduous bonsai. If you have a beech or you have a Japanese maple, if you cut to a bare trunk, they will still produce new growth and being able to survive. Coniferous bonsai will in 99% of the cases not. And it is most certain for a juniper to die if you cut below here. The only exception is uh, a tree like the yew, where you can be lucky if you cut very hard, that there still will be a chance for it to set new buds, but there are no guarantees. So what I will do, I will reduce the foliage and I will wire this main branch into a new position, but I will keep a little bit of the lower growth here simply as a security for survival if this fails. Then I can let this take over and wait for it to uh, develop a new foliage like this and getting rid of the juvenile look. So if we analyze the tree you will be able to see how it has a wonderful movement and it is uh, having a shari, that's what we call the center stripped piece here where the wood is dead. And that was uh, partly made from the mansay in Bonsai Nursery in early days and I have expanded it and carved it out so it looks more natural. And if you look at the bottom you will see a branch down here. Again, so this was where this is where the original foliage was and then it went out growing out too much and I had to reduce it and I replaced with some new growth up here and turned this into it again. So actually the tree was in a position like this when I bought it, almost like this, and I changed it to a cascade bonsai. The first thing I want to do is to reduce some of this juvenile foliage. And everything that gets in the way for this piece that will be the new main foliage and the canopy of the tree, so I will remove what is in the way. And I'm cutting it at the base to remove it. And here there is actually a little bit of the foliage we we'll like to create in future when the tree is not growing as strong as it is. And but this is in the wrong position, so I will remove it. And I'm careful not to remove anything I shouldn't remove. Here we go. And I will take this too. And So here I have my security branch that can take over if this should fail. I do not expect this to fail, but always better be safe than sorry. And here we also have some of this very thin foliage 
that is uh, weak. It has been shaded out and it has been grown out by the top foliage that is stronger growing. So what I need here is to reposition this part, but first I will clean out this a little because we don't need this type of foliage. It's too long and it's too thin and it will have difficulties getting short and compact where you can see this is already short and compact and when dealing with the, the Shimpaku or Itorigawa juniper you will not pinch them to get them in shape here we can show it because it is already taken off uh, and no harm will be done by that so if you constantly pinch like this to get this into shape and being more compact the only thing you will achieve is that you will have uh, a foliate mass like this with brown <coughs> sorry with brown tips with brown ends and it will never be beautiful and natural looking like the one that has grown it by itself here you can see how compact and fine it is and we have some of this new growth from this year's season and I will have to let this develop simply because this is what drags all the sap flow through from the roots through the trunk and out to the branches and this is what produces the new growth if I cut it at this time because I want this one to be neat normally I would cut it at its base in here to get this foliage shape in place but if I do it at this time I would reduce the health of the tree because all the energy will come from the tips dragging up sap flow nutrients and this will produce the compact new growth so let that be just cleaning up a little bit more here so I'm able to wire the reason why I am wiring the lower branch because you can easily argue why do you wire a branch that you know will get off in the future that are for no use. First of all, it might be useful, you never know. Maybe it will turn into a branch that would uh, look nice in the final new style when it is restyled here. But also because if you do not wire this branch, you have a around 50% chance of this main branch dying off if you only wire that one. One of the main principles in wiring is wiring all the branches of the same strains throughout the tree simply to reduce the risk of weakening a branch by wiring and repositioning it while letting other branches grow stronger. Then you will have this uh, mismatch between a strong branch that is, is taking over the sap flow and letting the weaker branch die. Because every branch will be weaker when wired and repositioned. They, you will break a little bit of the tissue underneath, you will begin to force the branch in a new position and make it more difficult for it to grow. So if you do not do that, then you risk to have a strong branch taking over. In this case, this small branch is already showing signs of producing uh, the wanted foliage. So I will also keep it for that because it is beginning to naturally uh, producing the soft scale needles we like, replacing this juvenile, uh, more sticky growth you know from the Unibus regita, the needle juniper. I will now wire this branch and this one and put them in a new position. I will hide the lower branch a bit behind the foliage here because I don't know if I need it in the future. Maybe I do or I'll just cut it off later. I will use a piece of copper wire because copper wire is uh, stronger than aluminium wire. The coated wire you use for most deciduous trees where the branches are softer and therefore doesn't need the same kind of strength. Copper wire is uh, brilliant for use for many conifers that has a stiffer growth and uh, you can simply use a thinner wire on stronger branches and it will be less visible. 
one of the things with the Japanese aesthetics is that even when you work on a bonsai, you want to make it look as beautiful as possible and you should not be able to uh, notice the wires too much. Often you see at exhibitions, at least in Europe, uh, trees that are heavily wired at exhibitions and uh, that is not the meaning. You can at exhibitions wire the very last details, fine branches, but never have guy wires, strings going from a branch to a root or heavy wire on uh, main branches. It's only the final work you can do up to a show. But even in a training period, it's about doing it so it looks as nice as possible. That's why we try to avoid crossing wires and uh, using a wire that will fade in uh, to the look of the bark of this tree and this copper wire will, when it is exposed to water and light, it will turn uh, brown and you will barely be able to notice it. But let's go on drying it and put this into position so we can get a final sh shape for now for this Simpaco Juniper. I'm feeling with my fingers how flexible this is and I choose a wire that I know can hold this. Um, one of the tricks when wiring is not cutting a piece of wire off when you, that you expect will fit with the tree, but you can start at one end and I need to fix this somewhere. And this one is too soft to fix it at and too close, so if I put it, connect the wire with the small branch here up to the main new branch, it will simply be too unstable. So what I will do, I will fix the wire to the piece of dead wood down here and drag it up here. And I go behind the branch, attaching the wire to the gin to fix it. And here we need a bit of pressure to fix it. Then what is important when you attach the wire to the branch you want to bend is before you attach it, you have to know in which direction you want to bend the branch, giving it the best possible support. Because we know this branch is going down, I will add pressure to the branch by starting it, applying the wire at the top of the branch. This will help pressing it down and keep it in position when I'm bending it. If I attach it from below here, then it will have the pressure upwards instead. So I go on top and here I support with my fingers so I not that I do not break the branch when I apply the wire. Always support with your fingers so you support the branch for every turn you make. And do not twist the wire, just let it roll around up to the end. And now I can cut the wire here without wasting any wire. Now the wire is attached. It is put on in a 45 degrees angle because that is what gets the most pressure to the branch and holds its best. The wire is put on firmly in contact with the branch. It is not tied up very hard because then you ruin the branch, you ruin the tissue underneath the thin bark, but just put on straight so you cannot even put a piece of paper underneath, but it is always also not so hard pulled up that you ruin the, ruin the branch. If you make it too loose, when you begin to wire the branch, there will be no support and it might break in between the bends of the wire. We're going to wire the small branch beneath for support and have an equal uh, pressure put on this one because then it will not grow too strong. At the same time, I will try to cut out a little of this clump here that has appeared by too many branches growing from the same place. And I will use a small concave cutter to do that and just go tight without 
taking too much. Just cleaning up. This is an area that actually could benefit from being carved a bit to go in as dead wood together with this. But I will wait doing that because I will wait and see how this works. If I go too close to this branch, I might risk it to dry out and kill it. So I wait till this is settled. And that is also what bonsai is about, taking it slowly, step by step. Here I will use a thinner wire. And I have a piece left over and I will attach it by... There's a small loop, small gap here where I can put it through and fix it at the same direction as the first wire. So it is looking neat and supported by this going here. And then I have to follow here and again going at the top of the branch, supporting it with my finger and 45 degrees, letting it sit tight and just wire it up to here. That's not necessary to do more, I just need to be able to put it in position. Now both branches are wired, they are fixed securely and I'm now able to reposition the main branch. I put a light pressure on the branch and as you can see I put my fingers around here to support this part and then I just slowly put this in position without being too hasty. This I will reposition at the back. And I will have to bring it closer to the trunk, so I will drag it in here, give it a little bit of movement, and all the time being careful not to break anything. Now everything is in position as I want it to be. I will cut just a little of the foliage here, and this is the very long thin foliage that is not developing into something compact and it is just in the very small details here. I will keep all of this outer foliage and the next step for this tree is to get some feeding and then we need just to wait and see how it develops during the summer. This wire will be attached for at least a year and uh, next spring I will of course uh, constantly look after it not to bite in but the growth of this specimen of this tree in this size will be uh, so small, so, so slow that it will not bite in before after a year. And the wire has to bite in just slightly in the bark and the tissue. Not very much, it doesn't have to be even visible, but it has to be biting in just a little bit, making it able to hold its position when the wire is removed again. That is because when you break the tissue, when you're wiring and putting pressure with the wire around, you will make a little bit of scarring inside the tissue. It will make an invisible callus underneath the bark and this is what strengthens up the branch and make it hold the position as it grows. I have kept the foliage for safety reasons at the back and maybe it will even be useful in the future but with a, a very very small bonsai like this it is about having a minimal amount of foliage but also enough for the tree to survive. So I have to support the growth of this main foliage pad and as you can see I have some new uh, fresh foliage growing here that will drag up the sap and the nutrients and support the growth and maybe some back budding here when it gets light. The same will happen at this part. I hope the juvenile foliage here will be replaced by the soft scale 
beautiful photos that we need for a small compact Shimpaku Juniper in the Cascade style. And if you compare with its larger brother over here, you can see there is a massive difference in how you treat a small tree like this. It needs a lot of care and it needs uh, a lot of care watering it correctly so it never dries out completely but also is, isn't moist all the time. And just a final word about the aftercare of a tree like this. The Shimpaku juniper really likes a lot of, of sun. But when you have a delicate small tree like a mama bonsai here, you will be risking it to dry out too fast. So a bit of partial shade at the middle of the day will not do any harm, even though it likes a lot of sun to get the compact foliage. When you're watering it, mist it with some water, use a water cam with a fine hose so you get this uh, soft watering all over the tree. It will really like that. Another thing is that with the Shimpaku juniper, you can position the foliage a bit downwards and it will not react negatively on that. A normal Chinese juniper that you know from garden centers around Europe and other places will dislike having the foliage bent down. But the Shimpaku juniper and the Itoigawa juniper has the benefit of tolerating the foliage pointing a bit downwards. It will redirect itself in an upwards position again after bending, but it will not be disturbed by this. It will not endanger the health of the branch doing that. It will do that at a normal Universe Genensis, so that is one of the benefits of the Simpaco Juniper. This was today's tutorial, and I will get back to the care of Simpaco Junipers later this season and see how we correct the foliage and trim it the right way so we do not ruin the health of the tree. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.